listeners, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing okay. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah? You excited to go see Trump? I can't wait. <laughs> you can't wait. <laughs> can't wait. Oh. Um, I... So Liberty Larry's referring to that Trump is going to address the Libertarian National Convention. Yeah. Um, the, all right, let's give some background, I guess. Uh, so the Libertarian Party uh, invited both Biden and Trump. Yep. Uh, Biden ignored ignored the Libertarian Party like you're supposed to. Yeah. Pretend we don't exist. That's yeah. the that's the mainstream pol- political way of making sure that there's never any other competition. Yep. Uh, Trump isn't savvy enough for that. <laughs> well, I think he's more savvy for going, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, well, let's hear it. I mean, it's, it, dude, and Trump's just this way in general, but any audience he can get in front of, he wants to get in front of it. Yeah. And I do think it's savvy because if he goes out there and gives the right speech, he may win a few people. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's going to win a ton. Like, I mean, libertarians are libertarians, and Trump is not a libertarian. But yeah, I, there are things that he could say. Um, well, and what he should do, if he's smart, this is what he will do, is he will get up there and throw some kind of bone to the libertarians. And I mean a bone that they can chew on. Um, like I had, before the podcast, I had mentioned maybe making Ron Paul or promising to make Paul, Ron Paul um, chair of the Fed or yeah. something like that. Um, yeah, my I, suggestion that, was to promise to end the Fed. Yeah, I mean, he could do that too, but mm-hmm. like something serious that, that libertarians be like, okay, like, I mean, if we get that one thing, that's a big enough thing yeah. to to vote for this man. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you're saying the smart play would be to get up there and say, hey, like, we can do this together, and if I am, am in office, this is what I will do that you want. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then the question becomes, well, do you trust him or not? Well, and of course you don't. <laughs> and and, and that, that'll immediately be the follow-up from libertarians. We'll be like, yeah, hey, we'll believe it when we see it. Right. Um, but, I mean, who knows? I mean, the man's a wild card. He is. Um, I mean, he could he could throw something out there and follow through on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's more likely not to, but, but yeah. who knows? Like, I, it, it depends on who talks to him last. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the point you were making <laughs> earlier, and you're not wrong about it that <laughs> yeah and I, I think it depends on who talks to him last if he actually speaks yeah. to the libertarian convention too that's I probably mean, th- true I'm, I'm sure that there are some like old school political operatives that are saying you can't talk to the libertarian convention because we don't want people to recognize them as something that exists yeah and there's an argument to be made that um, that you're just, I mean, the whole reason we want him there is because it throws some legitimacy behind us. Mm-hmm. And there's an argument to be made from the Republican side that that's not what we want. Yes. But now Trump's going to see that as, no, these are people just like anybody else, and I want them to vote for me. Right. Um, which is the smart play. Um, but it'll be interesting yeah. to see. I, like I say, it is an open question whether he actually shows up or not. You said there was a lot of... Um I don't know, unrest, I guess, in the Libertarian Party oh, about yeah. there's, this. There's so, like, people tell me about very that. strong on both sides as far as, I mean, there's a lot of people that are making basically the argument that me and, I guess that we, we were making as far as. Um, you we know, haven't it's, actually it's made that argument yet. No, but. we hadn't got that far. We <laughs> talked about that before the podcast. But there's an <laughs> argument to be made that, that this kind of, it puts eyeballs on the party. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, all right, that we need eyeballs on the party. Like, I mean, we're just, we're, we're too small and and nothing's really happening. And this is kind of Hail Mary pass, like, Mm -hmm. Hey, something, you know, let's get some attention. But of course there's a lot of people and they're not wrong. Like neither of these guys are libertarians. Like why give them a platform at our convention? This is our deal. Like it doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, okay. So there's that, but this is also the same party that put up, um, well, then. Bill Weld and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, Gary Johnson, uh, yeah. both of whom were just like really liberal Republicans. Yeah. Um, well, and, and or conservative Democrats. Hard to say. Yeah. Uh, but they <coughs> had been Republicans in their states, so we'll say and really I'll, liberal Republicans. Yeah. And I'll give Johnson 
I mean, Johnson is, he's just a weak libertarian, but Bill Weld was never been a libertarian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, I mean, I'll, I'll allow um, Johnson in the party. And like, I mean, I think mm-hmm. that there's a wing of the party that we need that's the would be the, the Gary Johnson wing. Yeah, okay, um, that's fair. I would give them that. But there's not a Bill Weld wing of the party. Yeah. <laughs> or if they are, they're so tiny that they don't count. Yeah, I remember when he got on the elevator with me at the convention and Bill Weld did. Yeah. And um, so when the door opened on my floor, I kicked him in the shin and ran away. (laughs) (laughs) Is that what you did in your head? (laughs) That's what I did in my head. (laughs) I was actually quite polite to him in the elevator. Um, Because you're a polite guy. (laughs) Yeah, because that's that's how I am. But but. uh, I'm trying to remember. I did challenge him on something, but it wasn't, you know, like we didn't have time to like hash anything out in the elevator. It was, it was a, I don't think you're getting. It was like a thirty second anyway. ride, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, no, I I, th- I think uh, so. And then there's Joe Jorgensen, which is who is at least who is at least a real libertarian. I suppose it's kind of a maybe the an older style of the Libertarian Party, libertarian. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. You you got uh, a, an old libertarian party that completely rejected the people that kind of control the party now. Yeah. Um, well, and there's like a lot the, of this, hate towards the Mises caucus because I guess... Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I guess Ma- Angela McArdle. Mm-hmm. I guess uh, I'm assuming she's the one that's made the decision to invite them in the first place. Yeah, I don't probably. Know. Um, and so there's been a lot of hate put out there as far as that, as far as even you know, putting the invite mm-hmm. out there. Um, but there was also talk earlier in the race of, uh, of running RFKJ. He's definitely not a libertarian. Yeah. I mean, the idea of having a, not a libertarian speak at the convention or address the convention. I don't so see any you, problem with that. Have um, you heard of um, Peter McCullough is going to be there. I'm pretty sure he's not a libertarian. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited to hear what he has to say. Oh, I'm yeah. not. I, I'm actually more excited to hear what he has to say than I am to hear what Trump has what to Trump say. But, say, yeah. um, but I, I certainly don't see a problem with having Trump address the convention, and I, I like the idea of um, it putting a bit of a spotlight on the Libertarian convention, uh, just yeah. because he draws so much media attention anyway, and so that naturally will draw media attention towards the Libertarian Party. Yeah. Um, and. I think, you know, most uh, politics in America have a long time, uh, ha, for a long time, have been trying to make sure that you believe that there are only two choices. Yeah. And um, while there are some, um, while he may draw some libertarians into voting for him, actually, it wouldn't surprise me a bit. Uh, if there are probably some libertarians that are planning to vote for him anyway. Yeah. Um, and certainly plenty of libertarians. There were some really uh, um, kind of leading libertarians that were advocating <laughs> voting for him in 2016. I, I don't remember that quite so much in 2020, but I know yeah. that there were libertarians that voted for him in 2020. Yeah. So uh, with our, with the libertarian candidate not running the greatest campaign, and so forth, uh, not, I don't know, not really kind of standing strong on some libertarian principles that we think are important. If you're going to be wishy-washy anyway, I guess you may as well try and vote for yeah. I mean, somebody my, who's going to win. Yeah. Well, my um, problem was... Who could win? Um, in, the, in the most tyrannical time that I've ever lived through, personally, to have a libertarian candidate that won't come out strong on it, was that? I mean, that was that was really kind of it yeah. for me and Jorgensen. Not really attacking the yeah, COVID regime, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean that that was me personally. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't vote at all in twenty twenty. I mean, I'll, I'll say it. I voted for Trump. <laughs> like I said, I mean, if I was gonna, I mean, I'm, I, it's not something I'm super proud of, but at the same time, like I felt like that was the better candidate. Like I just, I, if I had voted for Jorgensen, it would have been strictly because she was a libertarian, and that's it. Yeah. And us as libertarians give people crap about that. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, I mean, that's... So I voted my conscience. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so not at all. <laughs> yeah. Like, there was nobody worth my vote yeah. in 2020. Well, I mean, I, th- I think that was fair too. Yeah. Um, so... 
uh, at the same time, I think that one thing that it could do is that there are probably a lot of people that are ideologically libertarian that, or may even self-identify as libertarian, that vote Republican, that will see Trump address the libertarian convention and say, oh, wow, there's actually a libertarian party, like that, yeah. like a legitimate libertarian party that has conventions and everything. Well, and that, I think the, I conventions, didn't even know. the conventions thing, I think, is what gets you, because I do think that there's a segment of libertarians that are out there mm-hmm. that, that know there is a libertarian party, but doesn't even realize it holds conventions. Yeah. And doesn't realize that there's state affiliates and local affiliates probably in their area. Yeah. Um, like I say, I mean that it, you you could see it bring some attention as far as that goes. Mm-hmm. Um, like I say, I think I think it's worthwhile. I'm I'm glad that, I'm glad he's doing that. I'm glad they're doing it. I think I wish I could be there for it. Yeah, um, it's not too late. It is for me. Yeah. <laughs> but by the way, okay, so I I sent a message to the the Libertarian Party if. If there's anybody listening to this that's affiliated with the National Party and can answer this question for me, at Michael at thelibertymike.com. Uh-oh. Here we go, guys. It's coming. This um, is it. I had So I had um, registered from for the convention at a time where they had not identified speakers, and I knew that I wasn't going to be a delegate. Um, well, I guess I didn't know that at the time, but I wasn't a delegate at the time, and now I'm yeah. not. I'm an alternate anyway, but yeah. um, I... Uh, I chose the lowest, like the just like the basic package. Yeah. Well, so now I know who the speakers are, and there are a couple of them that I would like to see. Can't I upgrade my ticket package? I don't understand. <laughs> like, I can't find a way to do that, and so I sent a message to the party saying, "Hey, how do I do this?" And I haven't gotten a response. Any kind of response, which is also a problem, <laughs> Yeah. by the way. So two things. First off, get your stuff together. And like, if you have a contact us and we'll get back to you in 48 business hours thing, you need to do that. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, That's marketing 101 right <laughs> yeah. there. Secondly, uh, if you have an answer to this question, I'd really like to know, because I would like to give you guys another $125 or $150 or whatever the difference is between the one that I bought and the one that I want. No, you've got to buy the other package and your package. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Uh, or you can you can buy add-ons there, I think, but they're like $125 a piece, so I'd pay more than I paid for my original package just to add two speakers to the list or something, yeah. which is another thing that they probably want me to do. But I'm not doing that. <laughs> right. So you're either going to get another $150 from me or you're going to get nothing from me. <laughs> and you'll sneak in. <laughs> <laughs> Might be able to pull that off too. Right. No I mean, way they can have ice everywhere. I know how these things run. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know how they run. That's the reason I was saying you can sneak in. <laughs> so, I don't want to anyway. be stealing stuff, but, you know. Um, or if there's somebody that's just not going to... Oh, here's an alternative. If somebody that, that's bought one of the like full packages or, and they're not going to use all their tickets for the various breakfasts and lunches and so forth... Contact me. We can make a deal. <laughs> All right. Looks right. like I got a barter system going. <laughs> yeah. So that's the other. That's the other thing. Well, Michael I'll, at the Liberty I'll Mike. Pay you in gold. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I don't have any gold small enough to be to account for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm. I'm, I'm not chipping pieces off of the <laughs> bars that I have. Sorry. Uh, mm. I got silver. Oh yeah? yeah. I do have silver. Yeah. Silver is so so valuable. Yeah. And heavy. I had to pay to travel with it, but whatever. That, <laughs> I'll, I can get over that. Mm. All right. Um, so I just I wanted to pick up a little bit about some stuff that we talked about last week. There were some things that we said that we were going to talk about this week that we're probably not going to. Oh, yeah. Because there's just too, too many other things. Um, this is I, I think this is going to be mostly a history podcast, so I hope you guys are ready for that. Um, I think these are fun. And yeah. <laughs> they, you know, um, I, I have some other things to like new information to address at the end, but we teased last time there's a, um, an anniversary tomorrow. So today is Friday, May 3rd. Tomorrow is an anniversary, May 4th. May 4th is a special day, not because it's Star Wars Day. 
because Disney ruined that. That might have once have been a special day, but yeah. not anymore. But that day is past. Yes, un- unfortunately. Uh, we're going to pretend that the last several years of Star Wars didn't happen at all. <laughs> but May 4th is also, um, this year will be the 54th anniversary of the Kent State shootings. Ah. So May 4th, 1970, um, several students were killed by National Guard on the campus of Kent State. Um, in Ohio uh, as a result of protests of the Vietnam War. Yeah. Now, I've been reading a bunch about this this last week. Uh, This is a really really interesting story, and I I think it's relevant now because of the the protests that are going on on campus right now. now. Um, And there's been a lot of calls to call out National Guard to quash these protests. Um, And there's already been, you know, plenty of police going in and bashing people around and some good police work too, like going in and calmly and peacefully disassembling these things. Although even that I think is a problem. Um, yeah. So for example, though, as, as a bad example, um, Greg Abbott, governor of Texas, uh, called in, um, police and state troopers to break up protests on at UT Austin, mounted troops and so forth. And it was pretty ugly. And they arrested a bunch of people. Um, I think over 100 people they arrested. And as far as I can tell, like, they didn't say that they were arrested for anything legitimate, like any actual crime. Yeah. It, they, he said that they were arrested for anti Semitism. Yeah. (laughs) What kind of crime is that? And that's not a crime, period. The end. Yeah. Although it might be now, but we'll get back. We'll get to we'll that later in the back. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what? Hating somebody may be, uh, you know, um, I was going to say revulsive, but I don't think that's really a word. Yeah. It seems to fit, though. Re- it's revol- the first thing that came to, to mind. Revolting? Revolting. There you go. Yeah. Like, okay, hating somebody just based on their ethnic background or their religion or whatever. It, it's stupid, it's ignorant, and it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but it's not illegal. And yeah. in fact, that feeling is completely protected by the Constitution of the United States. It's supposed to be. You can hate whoever you want for yeah. whatever reason you want in this country. Yeah. No matter how stupid it is. Yeah. It, it, this country was founded on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We love hate. Uh, no, wait, that's not right. Um, yeah, because we hated the British. That's why this country was founded, right? Exactly. That was my reading of it. <laughs> no. So, but the point is that there is a constitutional amendment, the first one, as a matter of fact, that says, that protects you from thought crime. Yeah. Exactly. And so... If they were arrested for trespassing or something like that, okay, fair enough. Yeah. But as far as I can tell, they didn't name any legitimate Charges. criminal offense. Yeah. They went in there and broke them up and arrested a bunch of people for protesting against the whatever <laughs> you want to call it that's going on in Gaza. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to... Insert I mean, your opinion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The ethnic cleansing. That, I think, is... There's no way that that can be argued against. So, <laughs> yeah. the ethnic cleansing in Gaza, the the uh, at least the murder of civilians in Gaza. Yeah. I mean, that's fair, for sure. With American weapons and American money. Yep. Um, now, a little word on these protests again real quick before we get into the history stuff. Yeah. The, this is one of the, the, the man. I, I'm frustrated too about these kids that don't really understand. Yeah, like they're they're protesting. They should be protesting, but yeah. they don't really understand why they're protesting. Yeah. They don't have a real understanding of the history or the relationship or I- any of that. Like y- you hear them say stupid things, or they just say, "Well, you know." We don't really understand. Some of them are even just honest. There was a viral video of these two girls that were asked, like, what is your college doing that you're protesting against? And they're like, well, I mean, we don't really know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, 
but we're in solidarity solidarity with the Palestinians. And I think there's a whole bunch of like Marxist idiocy that's going on here. Like they're just protesting in support of the Palestinians because they see the Palestinians as an oppressed people. Yeah, that's not wrong. Yeah, uh, but there's a whole lot more to it than that, and I, I certainly wish that they they had a better understanding. All yeah. right, maybe fine. maybe while they're in those encampments, they should have somebody in there educating them. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably like some <laughs> lectures going on or something. Right. Um, and uh, in a lot of ways, I would say, especially in places like Colombia, this is a sign that your professors did not do a good job. <laughs> right. They talked you into the protest, but they didn't explain to you why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I do think of like the Occupy Wall Street protests. Yeah. There were a bunch of people down there. They were protesting. They should be protesting. Yeah. But they're kind of protesting the wrong thing. Like they didn't understand why they were protesting or well, they thought that the wrong group was responsible or whatever. The like, Occupy one was... There were at least my gather of it from the time mm -hmm. was that there was a bunch of different people there for different reasons. Well, like that, it wasn't like like it, but it seemed to me like it was a truly organic protest where like all of these people ended up there and they were all there for kind of different reasons. Um, I mean, they were all kind of against the same thing, but for different reasons and and that kind of thing. Well, that may um, be, and there, there's probably some truth to that in this too. Yeah, but. I think the the parallel that I really wanted to try and draw there is that even if they didn't understand it, yeah. like there was a recognition that there's something wrong here. Yeah. And they were right about that. Yeah. And so they should be protesting. And I wish they understood why more. Yeah. But it, it's legitimate to protest what's going on. Oh, absolutely. In the same way that it was legitimate to protest the financial system at Occupy Wall Street. Yeah. They may blame the, you know, the capitalists or whatever. That's not their problem. They don't they don't understand what the root of the problem is, but Yeah. But they understand that there is a problem. But there is a problem. Yeah. And I, I think that I think that there's a parallel here too. They recognize that there is a problem. They may not be able to totally identify that problem. Yeah. But there is a problem that's worth protesting. Yeah. Okay. So, <sighs> some people saying stupid things, but whatever. All right. Yeah. We'll let some of that. First off, a lot of that has been exaggerated to a great degree. Um, there, there aren't Jews terrified. Well, there might be Jews terrified for their life, but they have no reason to be. <laughs> but not with good cause. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's plenty of Jews in these protests. Yeah. Uh, it's not anti-Semitic. Yeah. At its core. Um, in again, you know, criticizing the Israeli government is not anti-Semitic. Criticizing Zionism is not anti-Semitic. There's a whole lot of anti-Zionist Jews. Yeah. A lot. In, I was going to say, one of the things um, I watched the other night, like they were interviewing some um, that were that were like anti-Zionist Jews. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that, so, I mean, they're out there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, this um, uh, House Resolution 6090 that we're going to talk about later in the podcast, yeah. uh, there was a Jewish representative um, that voted against it and was very vocal about why she voted against it. Yeah. Uh, that, oh, you don't have a clip, do you? No, I don't. Oh. Um, I read an article. I didn't yeah. hear uh -oh. it. I got you. Gotcha. Uh, but it, you know, it was very specific that... Um, Anti-Zionism does not equate to anti-Semitism. Yeah. So. Yeah. But back to Kent State. So May 4th, 1970 at Kent State, there were uh, several students that were killed by National Guard. Now, there's a lot There's a lot of unanswered questions on this, by the way. Like, okay. <laughs> I, I, there's not a definitive history of what took when, place. Yeah, well, I mean, the government was killing its own citizens. Like, they don't usually keep good records of that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Just saying. So, but let's start with what led to it. Um, okay. The So Nixon was elected in 1968 yeah. um, and took office in 1969 with a promise to end the Vietnam War. Yeah. And at first, it looked like he might. Yeah. But <laughs> I can't. This cat behind me really wants my attention. I hear that. <laughs> um, 
But then April 30th, 1970, he announced that uh, the war was expanding into Cambodia, that they were actually broadening the war. Yeah. Um, And in reaction, on May 1st, across the country, campuses across the country, there were protests uh, to end the Vietnam War. So one of these protests, of course, occurred on the Kent State campus. And um, the... it was initially peaceful. Like the protest itself was peaceful. And at the end of the, the day of protests on campus, um, they said that they were going to uh, pick up at noon on the mon- This was a Friday, yeah. uh, May 1st. Um, they were going to pick up at noon on Monday, May 4th um, and continue protesting. So the, the campus protests were peaceful, but in the town that night, Friday night, yeah. uh, there were some clashes between students and police. Okay. And they got pretty severe, like to the point of <laughs> students setting bonfires in streets and okay. and things like that. Like some people were hurt and like a few people Fiery, were arrested. Fiery, but mostly so pe- peaceful. Fiery, but mostly peaceful. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, now, who knows how that stuff got started? Yeah. It's also Friday night, college kids out drinking in the bars, yeah. et cetera, ended up clashing with police. Don't know exactly what happened. Um, the mayor of the town at that point in time said that he was going to um, he was going to declare a state of or a petition for a state of emergency and ask the governor to send national guard because he didn't think local law enforcement would be able to handle any kind of escalation. Yeah. Um, the next day, Saturday, uh, the second. Um, they had protests on campus. The National Guard had been deployed nearby, so they were able to um, reallocate some resources to the campus. So now they have National Guard on campus on the on the second. Yeah. The uh, the governor met with the mayor and some other people, and uh, the governor said that um, that he would uh, create an emergency declaration. Um, for the guard to be there to keep the peace. Yeah. He didn't actually do this, though. Oh, really? Like, the declaration was never done, which creates problems in the long run because then, without that declaration, nobody actually knows if the National Guard have any authority on the campus. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the National Guard think that they have authority, though, and the uh, the college administrators are just kind of deferring to the National Guard, and the National Guard said that they are banning protests on campus. Yeah. But nobody knows if they can actually do this, and this is in a day before cell phones and the internet, too. Yeah. So getting, like, disseminating that information is difficult. difficult. Yeah. They should put up banners. So... Now, this isn't to say back to fiery and mo- but mostly peaceful protests. Um, mm. The on that Saturday, the ROTC building was burned down on oh, campus. Wow. Really? Nobody knows who set the fire, but the assumption is that it was protesters uh, because protesters did kind of um, hinder the fire department's response oh, really? and were like gathered around the ROTC <laughs> building, like cheering <laughs> like, its destruction. Let it burn, yeah. yeah. Um, they probably did start the fire. Yeah. We didn't start the fire. I was going to say, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then there were more protests on the Sunday as well. Yeah. At this point, the uh, campus administrators, the college administrators, created something like 12,000 flyers that they put out saying that the um, that protests had been banned. There would be no protest on Monday, May 4th, etc. Yeah. Who knows how many people actually saw them? Well, and who knows how many people cared? Like, I mean, I know, I mean, I'm not a college student, but I can imagine if you start putting out flyers that say, don't do this, and and you believe in a cause, I mean, you're going to go out there and do the thing. Yeah. Well, and the, the other thing that I, I, it's probably important to mention 
is that the presence of the National Guard on campus created its own set of protests. Oh, I bet. Yeah, because beyond the the issues they were already protesting, I'm sure that there were plenty of students that didn't appreciate that. Yeah, and militarizing the campus. Exactly. Um, so the, the, uh, the protests over the weekend grew just because of the presence of the National Guard. So then you had, you had anti-war protests and you had protests going on against the National Guard being on the campus at all. Yeah. All right, so... Um, the guard did ban the plan protest on Monday, but they couldn't just send everybody a text message like you could today. Yeah. And nobody actually knew if the guard had any authority to ban the protest anyway, yeah. uh, because no emergency declaration had ever been issued by the governor. Yeah. Um, even though he said he would, he didn't. Yeah. So nobody knows who's in charge. Yeah. If it's the college administration or if it's the national guard. Yeah. Um, so the the protest on Monday happened. Yeah. And uh they had um they the estimates I saw said that there were probably about 3000 students there. Um that there was like a core group of about 500 students that were like really protesting, leading and involved directly with the protests. Yeah. Um that there were another probably 1000 students that were kind of um, I don't know, wishy-washy. They were like on the fence about it, but were were present for the protests, even though they they were, but they were kind of surrounding it, not really participating. They didn't have signs. Y- yeah, right. <laughs> but they weren't actively participating, but they were yeah. there, kind of in support of it, sort of. Yeah. Well, but then that's the rest. Okay, is that yeah. there are about fifteen hundred students that were really kind of on the perimeter, um, that were just there to see what was going on or we're going about their business and going to classes and stuff like that on, (laughs) you know, on the Monday, but we're there like around the, the, um, the quad, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. So, um, the national guard tried to disperse the protests, um, first with bullhorns, just saying you need to leave everybody disperse. This protest has, you know, been banned. You got to get out of here, et cetera. (laughs) Um, when that didn't work, uh, they They started firing tear gas into the crowd. Yeah. Now things have escalated. Yes. Um, So then they, uh, they approached the students. I'm trying to say this like not in a way that makes it sound like it was an attack exactly. Because I don't think that it really was. I think like they fire the tear gas, then they're moving towards the students to try and push them Like move them out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kind of like Greg Abbott's mounted state troopers did, (laughs) which created its own set of problems. Yeah. And the same thing is true here. Yeah. So um, they followed uh, the students over this hill um, and uh, followed them down into a parking lot. Now, when they get into the parking lot, they realize that maybe this isn't the place that they want to be. Yeah. Um, There's only about 70 National Guard. Yeah. Like I said, there are about 3,000 students. Yeah. Um, the National Guard do, however, have uh, M1 rifles. Yeah. So once they get down into the parking lot, they they got students all around them, more or less. Yeah, they're surrounded. <laughs> and uh, and so they move back up the hill. Yeah. Um, and when they get to the top of the hill. 20 is very specific on this. This is kind of interesting, I think. Yeah. 28 of the 70 National Guard guys, when they hit the top of the hill, turn and fire into the crowd. Really? And f- continue firing um, with their pistols or rifles and or rifles uh, for a little less than a quarter minute. Like, about 13 seconds is what they say. Yeah. Um, the result of that is that there were four students dead. Um, and nine injured, one of them uh, paralyzed for life of the nine injured. Wow. And the then there's other reports. So, the, you know, things are a little hazy around this. Now, yeah. there were multiple reports that said that when the National Guard was down in the parking lot, um, that they the, a group of them had kind of huddled in the middle. Now, yeah. and they could be huddling saying, okay, we, we need to get here. we need to get out of this situation. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Um, what do we do from here? We march back up the hill. Yeah. But since a number uh, of National Guard immediately turned when they hit the top of the hill and fired down into the parking lot. Yeah. An alternative interpretation is that a group of National Guardsmen decided while they were down there in that parking lot yeah. that they were going to march back out and then they were going to fire on everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and, and put a close to this. Yeah. Um, so then things actually get worse. <laughs> Yeah. As you might imagine. Well, yeah, now there's chaos. Yeah. Um, there's chaos. There's people dead. Uh, there's people injured. And the students who had been protesting but mostly peaceful are not peaceful anymore. Oh, I bet they're not. Um, because they've had friends killed or hurt. And now the students are aggressively moving towards the National Guard, apparently willing to give up a few of their lives because they got a whole lot more of them than they do National oh, yeah. Guard. Um, some... Uh, some faculty intervenes at this point. Uh, the story is that the National Guard was ready to start firing on them again. Yeah. Um, now they have a legitimate reason to feel threatened. <laughs> All right. Uh, where there's not really any support to them feeling threatened before, except for just the position that they were they, in. They put themselves in. Yeah. yeah. Um, so faculty intervene at this point and, uh, and plead with the National Guard to just let them talk to the students. So the, the faculty kind of mediates there and um, are able to convince the students to Disperse. to leave. Yeah, yeah. Um, at that point, um, and you know, people are being taken to the hospital. There's emergency crews out everywhere at this point, and, and so forth. Yeah. Um, now, there were a number of investigations. The uh, nobody was found to be responsible. Uh, uh, the uh, determination by the courts was that it was a legal shoot. <laughs> um, the uh, National Guard eventually settled uh, for something like six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars that they contributed towards the um, the victims. Yeah, which was of course paid with Ohio tax money. I was going to say that's your tax dollars at work. Yeah, so nobody was held. Personally actually responsible, responsible for this. Yeah. Um, and even after the National Guard settled, and the state said that they settled because uh, for an amount of money that it would have cost them anyway to Battle go to court, court again. Court. <laughs> yeah. right. um, so, but uh, the, the National Guard released a statement where they were careful not to admit fault. Yeah. Um, but a quote from that is, um, and I, <laughs> I wrote it sideways on my notes, so I'm... I'm <laughs> having to move into this awkward position so that I can read it and still talk into the mic. I hope you can hear me. <laughs> yeah. um, said, quote, better ways must be found to deal with such a confrontation. Yeah. Well, now, that well, was 54 years ago. <laughs> and it looks like yeah. we but haven't really found better a better ways way. <laughs> are still out there. We just haven't found them yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Well, and there's like when I say that, like I actually do mean that because they had a debate the other night of two guys that were debating like how this should be handled and what the right way is. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is there's no right answer. Like there, I mean, the, the, I, I I could see myself siding with both of the sides of the argument that they were trying to argue. Yeah. Um, as far as like when to bring, bring police in, like at what levels do you bring them in? Um, well, and then what do you do with them when you get them in there? The, the problem has been that these have really been peaceful protests. Yeah. Uh, there's been some reports of some isolated violent episodes, but yeah. these really have been peaceful protests. Yeah. This is not like the Summer of Love yeah. 2020. Um, yeah. Yeah. And well, what, what, I, what I wasn't aware of until the other night when they started breaking the stuff up, and I guess I should have been and I just wasn't, was that, that these are, it's more than really just protests. Like these are encampments. Like they've got like, got a whole little city with an ecosystem kind of going on in the middle of these campuses. Yeah. I, um, so Bridget Fetessy, uh, does a podcast called dumpster fire. Yeah. Which is kind of like a comedy news podcast. Yeah. And, uh, she said something like she, uh, was joking about the students, you know, all these like upper middle class or, upper-class students at these Ivy League schools 
mm-hmm. out there living in tents and <laughs> yeah. you know, and so forth and you know kind of larping as homeless people yeah and uh she she says if you want to live like a homeless refugee move to gaza <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> Oh. Which I thought was, yeah, like really hit the nail on the head there. I, I thought yeah. it made me laugh. Yeah, it's a dark joke, but it, <laughs> but it's it, it is funny. It is funny, yeah. Um, so yeah, they they have encampments out there, but they're in public areas on the campus yeah. and yeah. so forth. I now I've seen also students saying, uh, you know, we don't want you to video us. Don't video us. You can't video us. But you're on pub. No, the like, the reason that you're able to stay where you are is because you're in a in a public, public area. area. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're in a public area, you can't ask not to be recorded. Yeah. Like, this one comes up on social media a lot. In fact, I saw just yesterday somebody was um in one of the community groups was grousing uh-huh. because somebody was in front of their yard video in their house or something. Yeah. Which while is unnerving and a problem. Mm-hmm. Not illegal. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, you can do that. And the conclusion in the group was that it was a realtor or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but at any rate, you can do that. <laughs> but this is what I find really interesting about this. Uh, this is this is kind of the problem that I think we need to address with this as a nation, is that in 2020, when Americans were out on the streets in the midst of lockdowns, yeah, which were supposedly like legally enforceable. I don't know how, but whatever. <laughs> um, in the midst of lockdowns, while well, Americans were out on the streets uh, causing significant destruction yeah. to private property. Oh, yeah. Um, the police stood down yep. and allowed it to happen. But now, with a bunch of college kids protesting against a foreign war by a foreign government. Yeah. They're bringing in the police to break it up. We yeah. can't allow you to criticize this foreign government. Yeah. I mean that's it's the I don't know. The the world's a crazy place right now. And is it just a, a coincidence that Benjamin Netanyahu um took to Twitter or whatever X whatever took to social media last week and said that these protests need to end that right. that the government needs to bring in the police and break up these protests and then it happened. And then, yeah, I mean it, it, I've said it before on the podcast, like it's, it's crazy. Who's pulling the strings here. Mm -hmm. Um, like, like who's the superpower here? (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, that's what, uh, that's what Clinton said, except it it was after he met supposedly the report is that after Bill Clinton met with Benjamin Netanyahu, when Netanyahu walked out, um, Clinton was like, Who's the effing superpower here? <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> Who does this guy think he is? Who's the effing superpower? Yeah. Um, and the truth is, is I mean, it's, if we don't hold the cards here, and it's, it's we should. We should. Well, that's the we thing. do hold you, the cards. Yeah, but you wouldn't know it looking at it. Yeah. And but that's what's so amazing. Like we, because you're right, we absolutely do hold the cards here. But the problem is, is if you started pulling some of those cards. Like you'd find out real quick, there's a reason you don't pull those cards. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. So, so it gets worse. Um, the House passed uh, House Resolution 6090 this week um, to add a, a definition of anti-Semitism to the Anti-Discrimination Act. Yeah. Or yeah. Um, and they're using. We've talked about this before, uh, like a couple of years ago, talking about the Israel-Palestine. Um, conflict and what was going on there, like before all, before, before it was it in the up. news. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's anti Semitism. They're using the definition of anti Semitism uh, of the IHRA, which is the International Holocaust Remembrance Association. Yeah. I'm not sure about that last <laughs> word, but. Okay. I can't think of what else it would be. Um, the IHRA, anyway. Yeah. And it you it it includes a bunch of examples which we read on the podcast before, and I'm not going to do it again. Um, but I'm going to mention a few of the the things that are just criticisms of the Israeli government. Yeah. 
Um, there, it includes, uh, anti-Semitism is suggesting that, um, a person has more loyalty to Israel than their, their country. So to say that somebody has a, a dual loyalty would be considered anti-Semitism. Um, to say that Israel is an apartheid state would be anti-Semitism. Um, which it is, which it is. Lots of people agree. Yeah, I mean, I'm um, including so, I mean, Israel's own Betselem human rights group. Yeah, uh, say that it's an apartheid state. Um, well, legally, they have to say it's an apartheid state. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I may be wrong about that, but it just I don't seems know why they would have to legally. I yeah, I mean, I don't think kind of say whatever they want. There's nothing that holds them to any particular standard or anything. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess if, I don't know, but if, yeah. But they, they say it anyway, even though they're an Israeli yeah. human rights group, yeah. um, which you would think would kind of defend whatever they're doing. Uh, but there's several other things like that. So um, what it essentially comes down to is that, that it includes a whole bunch of criticisms of the Israeli government itself as being anti-Semitic behavior. And the House has just voted to adopt, like overwhelmingly, by the way, yeah. um, the House has voted to adopt this definition of anti-Semitism into um, the U.S.'s anti-discrimination laws, which means that it could be illegal. Like, you could face jail time or fines or whatever for making these kinds of statements. Yeah. Podcast is in trouble. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Luckily, we don't make any money anyway, so... Uh, what are they gonna, well, they could jail us, I guess. That would <laughs> yeah, suck. I mean, that was, like, in the statement. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would suck. Um, I don't want to get a jail for saying that Israel's an apartheid state, but Israel is an apartheid state. But they are, like, yeah. And, uh, so, the, the, again, you know, talk about, like, who's the superpower here? Um, I could call the U.S. a racist country, or an apartheid state legally without any problems. But if this is adopted all the way through, I couldn't make those statements legally about Israel Yeah. in the United States. I could say it about the United, I could say terrible things about the United States, but I can't say the same terrible things about Israel yeah. as a citizen of the United States. How wild is that? <laughs> uh, and so, so here's I mean, my suggestion to everybody because we are in an election year. We sure are. Um, in November, if your representative voted yay on this, get them out. Yeah. If your representative was waving a Ukraine flag last week after they voted to give another $61 billion to Ukraine, vote them out because they're not interested in you. No. They're not acting in your interest. They're acting in the interests of foreign governments. Get them out. Yeah. Well... And they'll they'll stand right there and say it that they're they're anti MAGA that they're that or they'll claim the Republicans are the MAGA Republicans. Mm-hmm. Like, what does that word stand or that acronym stand for? Mike Johnson, by the way, has been on board with all of this. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's already been shown that that guy that guy's a snake, man. Like, he's not. Um, he he's not the answer. No. No, he's not the answer, that's for sure. Um, and this brings me to another point that I don't, I don't know if I want to spend a bunch of time on because it's complex, I think. But in, in basic terms, the, I would say that the Republican-Democrat divide isn't a divide. We've talked before about that the right-left paradigm doesn't really describe anything anymore. It it doesn't really identify the a difference that matters to you. I mean, you may think that it does. There's like a few little things that they disagree on, but on the big things that really affect your life. Oh, they're united. They're united. The worst thing that can happen is bipartisan support for something. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the worst things. Anything that's bipartisan support, it's bad for you. Yep. And so we've said, you know, does this right-left conservative liberal paradigm really have any meaning or any value anymore? And, you know, we were kind of pushing towards a 
authoritarianism, libertarianism, like liberty versus authority yeah. uh, as the paradigm. But I've been thinking about this more and more recently. And while I, I think that I, I think I have a bigger paradigm that encompasses that paradigm, yeah, which is individualism versus collectivism. Yeah. Because both the left wing and the right wing power centers in this country are collectivist. Yeah. So communism, fascism, they're the same thing. We've talked about this before too, Mm -hmm. that I don't really see any difference. The difference is what you call the people that have the power. Yeah. That's the only difference between communism and fascism as far as I'm concerned. And what unites them though is collectivism. Yeah. And I would say that collectivism is completely antithetical to liberty because it ignores you as an individual. You have no rights. Your rights don't matter if for the collective good, we need to stomp on them. Yeah. And so nobody is really free in that scenario. And so maybe that's your new paradigm. That's what you should start looking at when you're, when you're deciding who to vote for is not right, left, or even Liberty authority. Yeah. Although, like I said, I, I think that they kind of fall in together in a lot of ways. I mean, but there's some aspects of liberty that you might find on either side that you'd say, oh, well, but they're, you know, the, the left is more um, concerned with uh, civil rights or, you know, these kinds of liberties. Um, traditionally. And the right is more concerned with uh, religious or, or speech liberties or whatever, you know, whatever yeah. it happens to be. Yeah. But the truth is that both sides have, at least the power centers, the, the mainstream of the right and the left, are collectivist. Yeah. And collectivism buries liberty. Liberty doesn't matter in a collectivist society. I don't, I can't think of a single collectivist society that has been good for liberty. Yeah. Um, and so if the individual, if the individual's rights can be ignored for the common good, yeah, then everybody's a slave. Shut up, slave. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's something to look at. Um, when you're thinking about who to vote for in a yeah. few months. Yeah, the problem is is nobody's really going to be checking any good boxes as far as that goes. Yeah. So well, many of these... I mean, not in the not in the mainstream parties. Um, not well, no. at the, yeah, that's, that's n- not at the federal mean. level, for yeah. sure. Probably not at the state level either. Yeah. Um, you got to find them local or find them in, in third parties. Yeah. Minor parties. Minor, yeah. Definitely the minor parties. Um, and then the last little thing that I just wanted to mention real quick before we close up, because we're closing in on an hour here, um, is that uh, the Navalny death in Russia that everybody made such a big deal out, out of over here, you know, many very important officials, including President Biden himself, saying that Vladimir Putin killed Navalny. Yeah. Um, well, in a small article in, I can't remember, Washington Post, New York Times, which are generally not... Not your normal reads? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't <laughs> like. I don't say that they're like bastions of truth in either of those places, but yeah. uh, there was an article that, um, that came out um, with U.S. intelligence sources saying that, quote, Putin likely did not order Navalny to be killed, end quote. Yeah. Um, And this was a pretty strong agreement among the intelligence agencies. And the reason to believe that in this case, even if it's a not very trustworthy source and it's unnamed sources, like that where it was printed is not necessarily trustworthy and it's unnamed sources, um, is that it's against interest. Yeah. It's against the narrative. Yeah. Um, because everybody was out there pushing the idea that, uh, Putin had had Navalny murdered, which was absurd on its face that we tried to express that on this podcast. I mean, I think that we did a, made a pretty good case that that was stupid, but, um, but they were pushing that anyway. And now they're backing off and saying, 
yeah, we don't have any evidence of that. And in fact, it probably didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, Quietly. <laughs> yeah. So um, months later. Anyway, right again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Liberty Mike podcast, right again. Yep. Uh, I guess that's it. Yeah. Um, do you have anything you want to? I, I talked yeah. a lot in this episode, so <laughs> it's you have quite all right. You wanna, no, you I, I, like I said, I think you pretty well put it all together. Okay. That's that's what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, then, um, let's see. Next week will be the. We're, we got to oh, record on Thursday, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. We have to record on Thursday. Yeah. Because you got a bunch I've of obligations a, on Friday. I've got obligations on Friday for sure. Yeah. All right. So um, the plan then is to record on the 9th and get that out to you guys. That's the plan. Yeah. I don't know. If Thursday doesn't happen, I mean, I mean Saturday. we might could look at Saturday yeah. or Sunday. But all of those days are dicey for me. Yeah. Well, we'll get Thursday's it out. Thursday's <laughs> kind of dicey. So, I mean. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll get it out as soon as we can. Yeah. Um, if worse comes to worse, we have an episode in the can still. That's true. But I, I'd rather not use it while we're both in town, <laughs> you <laughs> know, you and like not in the hospital or something. Yeah. So, um, I'd like to record a new episode. Yeah. So that's the plan. Anyway, we'll, we're, we'll try and get one out Thursday. If not, it'll be over the weekend. Um, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, uh, like and share, comment, subscribe, um, leave reviews where you can. Those help to um, tell your friends and all that other stuff. We appreciate it all, and it helps us a lot. And we, we get these weird bumps from time to time that we cannot identify what we've done. Yeah, the algorithms are... I, I'm telling you, it's just something funky with the algos. Yeah. I, Some, it's I feel being like, pushed somewhere. Yeah, I feel like it has to be like that we have to have been referenced maybe somewhere or something. Yeah. I I have no idea. I don't know where uh, it's coming from either. But every once in a while, we'll get like three times as many views and downloads as <laughs> normal, yeah. which is really strange. Um, and I don't know where it comes from. If I could figure out what we're doing, then I would like to do it more. <laughs> <laughs> right. So feedback uh, would be great. Yeah. If, if you know what's happening, yeah. um, if you see us somewhere else, yeah. like somebody else referring to us, I'd like to know anyway. Yeah. Uh, cause yeah. I don't know. That's cool. Oh, absolutely. I would, I would say something about whoever referenced us on our podcast. <laughs> yeah. And if you had something positive to say, you'd say it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, hey, they were smart enough to reference the Liberty Mike podcast, so they yeah. must be okay. Yeah, maybe, unless, yeah. They're, unless they're like hate watching. <laughs> well, that's okay, too. I'm okay with hate watching. <laughs> You're okay too. with that, too. Yeah. So um, anyway, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.